confident Dustin would come through, and he did. Um, tough conditions as well. Was that as good a start as you could hope for him? Yeah, it was a great start. I thought the operations were excellent. Um, timing, operation was pretty good. Yeah, he, he credited uh, Charlie and Corey for how much more difficult it is on them. I think we maybe don't appreciate all the nuance that goes into that. Was that really challenging for them in those kinds of conditions? I think they handled it pretty well. We actually had a few practices in training camp in the elements whenever you know it was raining out there, and that's good times to, to be able to practice and get that work. Um, so when it rains, I'm not, I'm not upset at practice. Cleveland moment, having that, that weather. What was the message to him? coming off the field after he did kick it in and kick so successfully in that in those elements. Yeah, he hit the ball well. Um, good elevation, good rotation on all of his kicks. Timing was good. Uh, yeah, it was, it was great that we were able to connect and earn those points. How did you, you, you feel like the coverage units? It, it seemed like you didn't give up many yards, you know, after you know, the return guy caught it. How, how did you, you know, those guys kind of grayed out? You know, first ball of the game, we left a little short. So uh, we'll clean it. We, we, we cleaned that up as the game went along on the kickoff. Uh, and then on the punts, I felt like we covered with pretty good leverage. That's going to be important this week going against a really good returner in, uh, in Austin for them in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, but emphasis on, on leverage and coverage and everyone doing their job and playing complimentary coverage. What are your thoughts and memories of, of going into Pittsburgh and, and trying to win a, a big division game like this? Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great environment to play in. Uh, I'm born and raised there. I have a lot of family that are that are from Pittsburgh that are going to be at the game, so it's always fun to play and coach there for me. Um, and excited for our team and another opportunity at a division to hopefully go in there and do what we can to get a win. What about the Steelers to you? I'm say that again. What was Brown Steelers to you when you were a kid? As a kid, yeah. as a kid, I was a Steelers fan, and then once I be once I became an NFL player, I quickly became not a Steelers fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> that being said, you know, obviously we knew that it was a tremendous rival back then. Uh, you know, I I do remember uh, Eric Metcalf taking those two punts back. I think it was, was it a playoff game, or what? End end of the regular season, yeah. So I do remember that scarring me as a kid and now I can embrace that now that I'm a part of this organization so Have you or will you share like your view of Steelers week with some of your players this week yeah and I haven't really talked much about you know me actually going back and how personal it is from you know my from my perspective uh, I'll probably talk about that a little bit later in the week tomorrow and into Saturday and Sunday um, what is today today's Friday yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I told Murph it felt like it was Thursday. Um, but, yeah, so I'll definitely, you know, expand on that with, with my players. Well, how difficult is that stadium? You know, it used to be one of the tougher places to, to kick field goals and especially to the, the open end. Has it, as they've kind of been closed, it, has it gotten, has that changed, you know, the conditions to kick in there? I think it's always been a difficult place to kick. Um, Dustin's had a handful of games there, to my knowledge. Um, you know, it is what it is. Whatever the conditions are, we'll be ready for them. We'll test them out in pregame. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be too bad on the elements. Maybe some rain earlier in the day. So we'll see how that goes. Bob, as a, just, as a young coach, kind of being around a guy like Jim Schwartz, what, what have you sort of picked up for him in your few months together so far? He's, he's awesome. I like, I like Coach Schwartz a lot. I've learned a lot from him. Uh, he holds players accountable. He holds coaches accountable. Uh, that's you know similarities that I feel like I have, you know, amongst my players and my staff. Um, you know, he is a funny guy. Uh, I really enjoy I really enjoy him. He's super smart. I've learned a lot. We've talked through a lot of situational uh, things we're gonna do, you know, collectively. Whether it's you know whether it involves he or I or you know our, our units per se on how we can work together to make them the most efficient, most effective, especially in those critical moments in the game when it involves defense to special teams and then some things we've implemented into our schemes and really more into my schemes than, than into his. Can you hear him like, can you hear him in the building when he's holding those players and coaches accountable? Oh yeah, he's like, I mean, Coach Schwartz is loud. Um, probably a little bit louder than me. Uh, and I think that I can be loud on the field at times. 
but no, he's he's been great. I think that you know everyone has gravitated toward his personality, and you can see that that defense has taken on his his personality and you know his style of play. It seems like in some some ways he's old school, but then it, on the other hand, he was one of the first guys out there to really embrace data and utilize it to his advantage. Is that something that that you guys, when you talk about things you've learned from him, that yeah, comes Ke to mind? Yeah, and Kevin did a good job of that this this off season of getting the coaches together, working collectively. And, and really expanding our knowledge on all of those fronts. So situational football is how you win and lose football games. So we, I think we've done a good job of preparing ourselves for everything that we're about to encounter this year. Did you feel like you guys came close to blocking one of those pumps? We had good pressure. Yeah, we had good pressure on a number of them. Um, the plan's always going to dictate you know, how, how we attack an opponent. Some weeks we may pressure more than others. Some weeks we may not. You know, everything is factored in, you know, whether it's the operation of the punter, personnel, you know, that we're, that we're looking at. So that's a week to week thing. And yeah, I thought we were able to get, generate good pressure last week and force a couple miss hits. What's the origin of, what's the origin of the high school highlights on Friday's meetings? The origin? Yeah. I just kind of started doing it when I became a coordinator in Indy. I did it every Friday, and the players kind of like took to it and, and liked it a lot. Um, I haven't yet chosen one for this week, uh, but um, yeah, I think I think it's just something to lighten it up on a Friday. You know, we're kind of like bringing everything together. I, I do more situational type meeting on Friday amongst all really five units, including our hands team. Uh, so yeah, I think the players I think the players enjoy it. It's always fun. I, I usually do it at the end of the meeting, and yeah. Did you go on YouTube and like find the clips, or did you ask somebody? Fortunate, I would say, fortunately for like nowadays, it's easier to find players' highlight films, especially younger players, because of like huddle and all these, whatever you want to call it, that they they you know put them on 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 the on the internet. Back whenever I was playing, that no one could find my film. I think it was it was on a VHS tape. Even my, I want to say. <laughs> Even my college highlight film was on VHS when I was like trying to send it out to scouts. So, not I'm not that old, but yeah. Ever seen? Jerome Ford is the best one I've seen. Yeah. Last week I showed it. Yeah. You can do a basketball one this week. <laughs> what is that? I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> Tawan. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I could. However. The, the the big guys aren't in my meeting on Fridays. It's really, for, for me, why I do a big four in hands meeting on Fridays. I to save the big guys for they're early in the week, and then I get them on, like, a Saturday meeting. So. Break out the VHS machine. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bubba, last week, um, you know, you were talking about how things happen in sports and you have to, you know, respond the right way. How much did the life you lived as a, you know, core special teams guy – um, kind of prepare you for what you deal with now as a coordinator? I think, I mean, you know, it wasn't like I've I talked to my players a lot about, you know, how I came into the league, how I felt like I stuck into the league. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's how hard you work and how much you put into it uh, that ultimately is going to give you the best opportunity to be successful. So, you know, I was a back end roster player that I, I feel like I had tremendous work ethic and I was going to not be denied. And I felt like that's why I was able to stick because I was I feel like I was a mentally tough and physically tough player that was going to do everything I could to be on the field and give myself a shot to succeed. I think that, you know, with our players today, I think that if they can take on that type of mentality and that's kind of how I've been as a coach as well. You know, I just I try to do as best I can to prepare myself and my players for any situation that can come about in a game. That way, when you're going into those situations, it's just like, boom, you're not even thinking about it. So it's an ongoing thing. Each week, you have your process. And my players are prepared in everything that we're going to see. And I'll try to review as much situational things as I can throughout the year and re-hit and, re and refocus them and get their minds thinking the right way to the uncertain, like kind of the uncertain nature of, of your job now. Like, I mean, I understand like injuries hit every position, everything, but 
Uh, it seems like special teams are, can be a lot of movement. You experienced that recently. Yeah, you have to – I mean, there's times in a season where you're going to have injuries, you're going to have to adapt. Uh, that's why – I had, that's why I'm in the position that I'm in. I'm trying to do the best I can with the, the players available. If someone's not available in that instance, you got to do your your best to figure it out. And you know, I think that I've done a good job of that. Did the dominance of the defense and the intensity of the defense spill over to the other units on Sunday? Yeah, we definitely fed off of what the defense was doing. The the, the third down stops were were crucial and critical for our ability to control field position. I felt like we did a good job of that in the game. Um, so gave our offense good fields to work with, good short fields to work with, which is which was a positive. Hopefully we can get a lot of that this week, you know, getting those stops. I came in on I came in on Monday and I could barely speak because the damn stadium was so loud. And trying to get the communication out to you know, your players, what the call is, because, you know, you could have one call up and then you get a sack and now it's longer yardage situation. You may want to get into something else. So being able to get that communication out was definitely hard in our stadium. Credit to the fans for that one. Oh, you had uh, Anthony Walker. <clears throat> you know, he's been here as a captain this year despite being gone for almost a year. What do you appreciate about him? Extremely hard worker, very, very well prepared, super smart you know, in the classroom. He's one of the first ones in the meeting room every day. And he doesn't play on all four units. He'll play on one or two, depending on the game plan. And he's a tremendous note taker. He's very detailed. He helps the younger players out. Even when he's not in, uh, in practice, he's coaching up the younger players and bringing them along. In that regard, I feel like he's like, he truly is a great, a great leader. You know, not even, not just on the defensive side of the ball, but on, the, on special teams as well. He understands that he gets it. He's just, just a guy that understands football and just gets gets it. Bob, I know Mike Ford had that one really good stop to give him bad field position, and then Cam had the other one, I think, in the second quarter. Like, for yeah. a rookie to come in and get a play like that, how much of a confidence booster, I guess, can that be for, for Cam in particular? Yeah, it was great. I mean, Corey gave us a good – good both on both reps, gave us good punts to cover, good leverage down the field, both of those guys – showed up in the first game looking for those guys to be very effective cover players for us this week. Like I said, we have a tremendous challenge in this team. They've got multiple returners that they have used in the past, and we're going to be prepared for all of them. <laughs> that's, over, that's overkill. That's, that's uh, really, um, you know, that's a result of our off-season studies. So uh, hats off to coaching staff. We talked through different ways to exploit different looks, and that was one of them. So that's some stuff we did in probably early March that, that carried over. But what was your idea to uh, add it to the game plan Saturday? Uh, I mean, we talk about it, all, all the situations that come up, especially Saturday. The good, the good news is the game planning's never done. Um, to be able to go in and install something on a Saturday morning with the guys and have it show up Sunday in the game is, is, is hats off to all the guys. But. Uh, yeah, it was just something we, we've, we've seen from them and tried to take advantage of the situation. How did you think Deshaun uh, handled and overcame the elements? Man, it was, it was rough, Mary Kay. It was, it was really, it wasn't a hard rain, but it was an everywhere rain. It was just that mist. It was all over the everything. Um, you know, he missed some throws that he normally wouldn't miss because of the elements. Um, so that's the positive. We had some guys that were open. Um, I feel like we'd had more production had it not been such bad conditions, but both sides had to play under him. I thought he played admirably considering the conditions. Those deep throws early that you weren't able to connect on, a lot of it because of the conditions, though. When you go back in the film room and look at that, though, do you get excited knowing that those plays were there to be made? Marquise was able to get separation. Same thing with Amari and DPJ. For sure. You know, I, I, we're doing good things uh, schematically, I feel like, and had a good feel going into that game. I know that opponent really well, good defense, obviously, but to be able to see the separation and the guys that were open, feel confident that under good conditions, we'll be able to hit a few of those. Alex, Cam's obviously a big loss for their, for their defense. Is there, can you quantify just what it means to not have him on that defensive front for them? Uh, I mean, he's a perennial all pro. I mean, just to take one of those guys off the field uh, is, is you know tough for them, obviously good for us. Um, they'll have guys to step in and, and take that role over. But when you're talking about one of the elite defensive players in the league, that's not going to be there. At, you know, um, I'm, not, I'm not upset about it. I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I know, obviously, you don't want to see guys get hurt. But 
I would rather not play Cam. <laughs> I'd rather not play TJ. You know, those are just the realisms of the, of the game. They're great players, and to take one of them off the field is going to be tough for them, obviously. Now, so what have you seen out of Dewan that makes you think he's ready for the starting role and then this matchup with TJ? Yeah, I mean, it's a, what a matchup he gets, right? First, first draw out as a starter. But uh, I mean, guys played a lot of football at a high level, uh, at a quality uh, school. You know, played in big games before. Um, you know, we got to make sure we're, we're we're not just leaving him out on an island. We'll take care of him. One of, you know, I think one of the the, the one strengths is his pass protection. Uh, being so large, it's tough to get around him. So. Um, it'll be exciting to watch. It'll be a great matchup, you know, and I know Dewan will be up for the challenge, and it is a challenge. Alex, he's one of the biggest humans I've ever seen. Is there a comp? Is there another tackle you've played with or coached that? I mean, just guys that were around when I came, like Lincoln Kennedy was a guy that that he reminds me of, just a massive man. Um, you know, Jason Peters was as he got older, grew into that body. He was bigger, but Dewan is, you know, he he is a a mountain of a man. When you're uh, scheming defenses. How many edge rushers in the NFL, or just rushers in, in, in general, have a Euro step in their arsenal the way Miles is? Like, seriously, is that a move you see? Yeah, I mean, the great ones do. I mean, they, they have the full gamut of moves um, and the counter moves off of that. Um, I haven't studied the pass rush, much like Scott Peters and those guys have, um, but I know he gets home. You know, I know that uh, the San Francisco game when the, he wasn't – uh, affected by an edge, whether they're chipping or at least getting in his way, he hit the quarterback and caused sack fumbles, had three sacks. So obviously he's a great, great player, and we have to make sure we account for him at all times. That you guys have been working on this summer with Nick Chubb in the, in the passing game, Elijah Moore in the backfield. How much can that change week by week now that you've seen it in practice? Yeah, always evolving. Um, just trying to find good matchups, trying to find plays where we could, uh, you know, give the defense a different look, do different things, hand it off to Elijah a few times, you know, and put Nick out wide and throw him the ball. So um, it's, it's multiple and versatile. That's part of our identity as an offense, and we'll continue to grow that. What about this pass rush duo of T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith? And is that, you know, the thing that's going to keep you up? at night between now and Monday? It's definitely uh, a number one priority for us is to make sure we take care of the edges. You know, you can talk about TJ all you want, but Highsmith on the other side is a pro bowler also and is an extremely good pass rusher. So not just one side we have to be uh, on point on, it's really both sides. Can you speak to um, DeWan's just demeanor and development, like getting put in last week on no notice and just how he's come along all summer to get himself He's rolled with the punches. You know, he really has. He's just gone with the flow. Um, you know, he's, I see him this morning he's sitting up in front of the meeting room in our protection meetings, and he's ready to roll. I think he's ready for the challenge. It's a huge opportunity, uh, you know, for him to step in and play as a starter, as a rookie. So everything I've seen has been positive. Uh, how, much, um, how much did the game plan have to change because of the weather? I mean, you started in three wides and then – wind up going to a lot of like three tight ends. Is that strictly because of the weather? It had a lot to do with it. You know, as we as we built the lead also, we wanted to uh, lean a little bit on the run game, which we had success with. But, uh, you know, the, it definitely affected the pass game early. Um, we were waiting for that break after halftime, and it never really came. Um, but, you know, we were both playing under those conditions. So. You guys really, you know, want to hit a lot of those big plays and get those explosives this year. It seems like that's a point of emphasis. Um, if they if they don't hit the way that you want them to, do you just have to keep going with that and know that you know you might miss two and get one? Or how, what's your philosophy? Yeah, I mean it, it's uh, they're they're really low percentage if you look at the overall completions, but they're huge explosives when you do hit them. Um, you know we'll take misses. Um, we're going to stretch the field. You know we want to be explosive. The other part of that is if it's not there, and it's one of the things we, we talk about in the quarterback room, if the shot's not there, find a completion with the check down. So you can't get greedy in those situations. Just have to take what they give you and just keep dialing them up. Uh, how well did you know Coach Schwartz before he got here? Uh, just played against him, um, mainly my time in Green Bay uh, when he was in Detroit, but not, nothing on a personal level. What have you thought of what he's done with this defense so far? Very impressive, obviously. That was a, you know, it was an unbelievable performance by them. Uh, their efficiency rating, I forget, was in the high 70s, which is unheard of. So they, they actually, I mean, they, they dominated on that side of the ball. And that, that's great to see when you're an offense and, you know, you have a few three and outs and you feel like, okay, our defense is going to get us the ball back. That's a good feeling. So, uh, you know, really happy for those guys and the success they had in that game and continue uh, moving forward to be a dominant defense. My first initial thought was, oh, God, we're going to get a penalty <laughs> because it t t when he tends to do that, whether it's legal or illegal, and generally it's legal, it's just such a violent act that it gets called. 
So I was glad to see that the, the ref didn't call it. I mean, he's had many dominant blocks like that um, that have been called. Unfortunately, that when you, when you send them in, they come back as well. He had a, you know, it really wasn't a hold. Um, so I, my, my first fear was, oh, shoot, he's going to get a flag. But uh, didn't see the flag. He's very happy. I mean, he's a, he's a, a strong, strong guy. His finish is, is really good. So he's going to have those opportunities. We just got to be smart when we, when we pay and kick guys. I think um, Dewan's quick feet will help him in, in this game. He's going to have to use every tool in his toolbox uh, to block that guy on the right side. There's no doubt. But his, his foot speed will help him in that regard, along with his size. Do to get McCaffrey the yards he was able to get last week. Uh, I thought they were persistent with the run. I thought they stuck with it. They got some some looks of some you know one two three yard gains, and then they just kept running. And you know it's kind of a you know you hang your hat on the run game. And eventually, you're going to get some of those to pop. He had the big run, obviously, uh, 65 yards or whatever it was. But then they started increasing them as they got going a little bit in the second half. You know, again, when you when you take an all-pro defensive tackle out, it's tough to replace that body. Run game on Sunday. I know Nick too caught all four of his targets early in, in the pass game too. Right. Like how I guess big that was given the weather, and then considering that's been a discussion point with Nick and, and how involved he was going to be in that. Aspect. Sure. I mean, anytime you could take the ball and basically hand it to Nick Chubb five yards past the line of scrimmage is a good thing for us, right? Doesn't have to get through the line. Doesn't have to be blocked perfectly. So check down emphasis is, is a big part of uh, the production that Nick can bring us. Alex, I know you guys have, you know put a lot of faith in Deshaun Watson at the line and when you play tempo, things like that. How good is he at the line of scrimmage at, at diagnosing things? And really good. Uh, he's, he sees it as well. I've got anybody I've been around, um, he can tell you exactly what happens on the play where each defender uh, was. You know, he'll see stuff that I might not catch on the sideline and he'll say, no, the safety was there. And you're like, oh, shoot, he was there. So he sees it extremely well. It's one of his strengths, his ability to see and read defense.